Welcome. Welcome to Uni of Orange County. I'm glad that you're all here, the ones that are here in person, live, and the ones that are watching us on our YouTube channel. We're so glad that you are here. And I always like to start off with our vision and our mission statement. It's important to remember why Uni of Orange County is here. And so our vision is centered in divine love. We joyfully co-create a world that works for all. And our mission is to awaken, inspire, and transform lives. And I would like to thank those people that are here helping us. Um, we have today, we have Bill on the piano. Thank you. And Tom doing our sound. And John and Matthew doing our taping, our live streaming. And Christopher at the camera. And Diane is here for our daily word and meditation. So. so a couple of things. This Tuesday, September 22nd, we're doing something a little different. We're having um, a first aging backwards workout class. So um, we've done a lot of things with books and all this. This is um, based on a program called Aging Backwards, which was the is the number one program on PBS having to do with fitness and exercise. And um, it's anyone can do it. Um, it's limited to how many people we can have here. We're limited to eight because of social distancing. You just need um, bare feet. You don't need any special shoes, a yoga mat, comfortable clothes. And the exercise program is by Sarah Esmond White. And um, it's an excellent program. So it is going to be on Tuesdays, four Tuesdays in a row from four to five o'clock. Everyone is welcome. And if this works out and there are people who are interested and they can't come in person, we will do a Zoom version of it as well. So please register for it at register at unityoforangecounty.org. Um, so is stress getting to you? You know, things are really a little hectic right now. So we have set up a prayer line. So if you email uocpray at gmail.com, uocpray at gmail.com, we will have one of our prayer chaplains contact you and pray with you. We all need prayer right now. So rather than spending it in your house alone and concerned about things and letting things get to you, this is an opportunity to have someone pray with you. And if you've ever had anyone pray with you, you know there is so much power in that. So please contact us again at uocpray at gmail.com. And remember, if you're watching us on YouTube, to please like it and also to subscribe to our channel. And if you are wanting to give to Unity of Orange County, just you can take out your phones and you can text 77977 and then the message put Unity of OC Give. And then you can just give us what you can donate any amount that you want. And now I would like to introduce Diane, our prayer platform person. Whoa, that's a mouthful. Prayer platform person. So the daily word for Sunday, September 20th is smile. I share the joy and love of God when I smile. Even if a language barrier prevents me from understanding another's words, I know that most people will respond to a friendly smile. My smile can convey goodwill, communicate delight from an unexpected blessing, or inspire awe at the sight of a star-filled night sky. A child not able to talk yet shares love and joy quite effectively with a sunny smile. I feel happy when others smile at me, this friendly, welcoming gesture reminds me that we are all one in spirit. Smiling at my reflection in a mirror, I see the light that shines from me. I feel a quickened awareness of the divine love and joy that are present everywhere as I realize how simply and beautifully my smile can express that love and joy 
without any need for words. And from Numbers 625, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Now we'll move into our meditation. For today's meditation, we're going to be doing a Taoist practice that's referred to as inner smile meditation. So let's start by sitting at the front edge of a chair with your feet flat on the floor. Close your eyes and feel connected to the earth through your feet. Smile gently. Let your lips feel full and smooth as they spread to the side and lift just slightly. This smile requires nothing extreme. It relaxes your entire face and head. Breathe fully, deeply, and slowly. While wearing this smile, consciously relax other areas of the body that may be holding tension. Bring your attention to the space between your eyebrows. Visualize energy settling there like a warm, shallow pool. Imagine settling into that pool, feeling comfortable and warm. Slowly let your awareness sink deeper into the center of your head as if you are in a cozy and comfortable cave. Then, imagine a smiling face in front of you. It could be your own face or that of a loved one. Draw the smile and joyful energy it portrays into this space in the center of your head. Let your forehead relax. Let your face and body relax. Feel the warm and joyous essence from this smile begin to cascade through your entire body. Visualize the smile surrounded by warm golden light. This light warms you on the inside as the smile moves through your body. Visualize the smiling, warm energy moving throughout your entire body. It comforts and heals your muscles, joints, and internal organs. Take your time. Visualize each organ being soothed by the smiling, warm energy. After you have spent time connecting with and smiling into your organs and muscles, notice the sensations in your body. Perhaps you feel energized, content, warm. Allow the smile to drift wherever it wants or direct it to any place you are feeling discomfort. Continue visualizing the warm and golden essence of that smile within your body. Bring your awareness back to any place you may have missed or any place you'd like to linger and let it flow over and through your organs and soft tissues. Imagine this warm, smiling energy spreading throughout your entire body. When you're ready to bring the meditation to a close, anchor this feeling of peace and contentment into your body by placing your hands over your heart. 
Take several deep breaths and simply relax. Release any visualizations or thoughts and simply be without thinking or doing. Thank you, Bill. That was beautiful. And thank you, Diane, for that wonderful meditation. And today, you know, last week I mentioned that I get my inspiration for my talks. I'll take them anywhere I get them. But um, last week it was a T-shirt. But we did a little book club study thing, our summer book club, on this little book uh, one of our members, Holly, had told me about. It's called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. And this was such an unbelievable book in my mind. It had so many important life lessons of how to deal with life, especially now, that I bought a few copies of this book and I sent it to my grandchildren. And I got a text from my 17-year-old grandson. Well, if you're familiar with 17-year-old boys, the fact that I even got a text <laughs> is amazing. And the fact that he loved the book, that he had to send me a text, was even more amazing. And I thought, wow, this book is really fabulous. And it's a little book, and they have a, a lot of pictures, so it's not a lot of words. But um, I just want to go over some of these things because I think it's so important to remember this in life right now. So the boy meets a mole, and the mole says to the boy, I'm so small. And the boy says, but you make a huge difference. So right away, this book got my attention because um, when I was young, when I was in elementary school, I was really short. Now, people who know me will laugh. They're laughing now because I'm really short now. You know, I'm like five feet tall. But I was really short in elementary school. I did all of this growth, a whole five feet of it, in high school. So in elementary school, kids would make fun of me. And um, they would call me shrimp boat, and they would call me names and everything, because I was so much shorter than everybody else. And I would come home from school crying, and my mother would say things to me like, good things come in small packages. She would say, diamonds come in small packages. Rubies come in small packages. And so she tried to make me feel better, which I never really did. But um, in the book, when the when he says that he's so small, the boy says, but you make a huge difference. And the important lesson in that is whether we're small in size, whether we're small as far as age, whether we are called small by the world because maybe we don't have the success that some people have, we all make a difference. We make a difference, every single person. And it could be something as simple as a smile. 
It could be something so simple as one little thing that we do that makes a difference in someone's life. And when we make a difference in someone's life, we make a difference in the world. So the next thing um, that I want to talk about is the boy, um, the mole says to the boy, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the boy says, kind. Well, you know, kindness is an important thing, especially now. You know, so often we're so busy worrying about our own lives and our own problems that we forget the simple thing of being kind. And being kind doesn't have to be any big act. It could be something as simple as letting somebody in in traffic as opposed to cutting them off because, you know, you have to get one car length ahead of them. Or at the supermarket, letting someone go in front of you. You see somebody has less number of items than you, letting them go in front of you. When someone does something kind to us, it makes such a difference in our life that we remember it for years afterward. When um, we were in Miami and we had had uh, Hurricane Andrew had come and the kitchen was um, had been destroyed, a lot of the house was. And so we had to take all of the stuff from the kitchen because well, it had to be redone. And we had to put in these big black trash bags. I mean, we were so overwhelmed, there was no way to go through anything. So we just threw everything in these big black trash bags. And a lot of the rest of the house were in big black trash bags. And when the time came to put things back, which was quite some time after that, I was just overwhelmed. It was like I just looked at all these black trash bags and I thought, I just can't deal with it. I wanted to take them all and throw them out. You know, if you live without something for a while, you begin to realize, hey, do I really need it? So I was ready to throw everything out. And um, I had a friend I was talking about uh, to a friend of mine, Jane, and I said, I just can't deal with this. I think I'm just going to take these trash bags. She says, that's like all your belongings. <laughs> I said, I know, but I can't deal with it. And um, she said, I will help you. And so she came over and she helped me because when we have to go through stuff and decide what we want to keep and what we want to leave, it helps to have a friend there kind of saying to you, well, do you really need that? Or maybe you will need this. And this little act, which cost her nothing except some of her time, meant such a difference in my life that I remember to this day as one of the kindest things anyone has ever done to me. for me. So being kind doesn't have to be anything big. Being kind is seeing a need, seeing uh, something that someone needs, and reaching out and offering help not waiting for someone to ask for help. So the boy says to the mole, what do you think success is? And the mole answers, love. You know, love is the success. Because if we learn to love and if we are loved, then we are successful in life. It's not about what kind of car we drive or what kind of house we live. It's whether or not we give love and we accept love and whether we are a loving influence in this world. And so he says to the mole, the boy asked the mole, what do you think is the biggest waste of time? And the mole says, comparing yourself to others. And I thought, what a waste of time. It's right, because no matter what you do, no matter how you try, you are never going to be able to compare yourself to others. Because what happens is we judge our insides by someone else's outsides. See, we look at someone and we think, oh, they got it all together. They look so together. They must have, they must have life down pat. They must have an easy street. And inside, probably what's going through them is the same thing that goes through us. Oh, I'm such a piece of garbage. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. Oh, this isn't working. I hate my job, whatever. All this stuff that we feel inside, all the emotions and the negativity and the self-hate sometimes and all of that can be going in someone else. There's another thing later on, and they're looking at some swans in the lake and one of the characters say, oh, it looks like it's so easy for them. They're just gliding on the water. And the mole answers, but they're working really hard under the surface. 
So when we're comparing ourselves to others, we're looking at just the surface. We're not really seeing what's inside that person, but yet we're looking at what's inside of us. So comparing ourselves never does any good. And then, I love this one. The mole says, most of the old moles I know wish they had listened less to their fears and more to their dreams. You know, when we get a little bit older in life, very often what we are um, most sad about or sorry for in our life is the fact that we didn't listen to those dreams. You know, I always say when someone is dying, they never say on their deathbed, oh, I wish I had more money, or I wish I had owned a bigger house, or I wish I had had that nicer car. They always say things like, I wish I had spent more time with my family. I wish I had done that exploring I wanted to do. I wish I had gone on that trip. We have to live our lives for our dreams because it may be too late one day. So I had a, the church I had prior to this. Everything was going well. I loved where I lived. I loved my home. I loved the church. Everything was great. But someone I knew, husband, went to the doctor for some kind of checkup and found out that they had some unusual kind of brain cancer and that they probably had a year to live. And he was this very successful attorney. They had a gorgeous home in a really beautiful area, and they were very successful. And all of a sudden, he realized, and he was in his 60s, that he might only have one more year to live. Well, let me tell you, the job wasn't important anymore. What he wanted to do was spend time with his wife and travel and see his children and go to places he wanted to go. Because if we don't live our dreams, it gets to be too late. So we have to remember that. We can't let fear stop us. So after hearing that, I decided one of my dreams was always that I wanted to live in a motor home and travel all over the country. I'd had this dream for years. Originally, it was a Volkswagen bus I wanted because <laughs> that looked so, just that, was, it was, you know, the 70s. It was the Volkswagen <laughs> bus. And um, so um, we didn't exactly do the Volkswagen bus, but we did do a motor home. And we packed everything. We rented out our apartment and we got into the motor home. And we did. We traveled all over the United States and Canada. We wound up selling our condo, getting rid of everything that was in there, and taking off on the motor home. And we found out that everything we really needed, we can put in that motor home, that we really didn't need anything else. And so I got to live that dream. And I know now that no matter what happens at the end of my life, I don't have to say, oh, you know, I wish I had done that. I wish I had traveled all over the United States and Canada. I wish I had lived in a motorhome for a couple of years. The freedom that comes from it is absolutely unbelievable. There is such a freedom to not having a bunch of stuff and basically having all your stuff with you. I always used to say I never had to worry about what to pack to go anywhere. Everything I had, I already had. So it didn't matter what the weather was like. I was prepared. So the boy says to the um, mole, he says, one of our greatest freedoms is how we react to things. So one of the things that happens in the book is the boy and the mole come across a fox, and the fox is stuck in a snare. And the mole is trying to be friendly to the fox. And the fox says to the mole, he says, you know, if I wasn't in this snare, I would probably eat you. But the mole cuts through the snare so the fox can be free. You see, that is what life is about. It's how we react to things. Even though he might have been in danger from that fox, he reacted with kindness. He did the right thing. He set the fox free. And so that is what we judge ourselves in life. So another thing that it brings it up is they're talking about it, and they're talking about kindness, and they say, one of the hardest persons to forgive is yourself. So we talk a lot about forgiveness and unity because it's such an important part. If you have unforgiveness issues, you really can't find much peace and serenity in life. 
the more baggage that we carry around with us, the more things are difficult for us. In the course, um, Seven Keys to the Kingdom, the man who does the course talks about filling up your car with garbage. You know, all that unforgiveness is garbage. And we put it in our car, and then we close the doors, and we roll up the windows, and we drive around. That's what we do with all this unforgiveness that we have inside of us. And we drive around, and the more we drive around with this stuff that's inside of us, what happens? It's garbage. It stinks. It smells. It gets worse and worse the further we drive with that. That's what happens with the unforgiveness that's within us. The longer we carry it within us, the more it stinks and smells and takes away from the joy of our life. So there's a movie called October Baby, and it's about a young woman who finds out that she's adopted, and she's really upset by it. And so she goes to find her birth mother, and she finds her birth mother, and she finds out that they were actually thinking of aborting her, and she's so angry. And this is the scene looking for some consolation, looking for some relief from this feeling she has. She walks into a church to talk to the priest, and this is the scene. I guess I'm trying to figure out how to let go of things. Things? Can't figure out how to let go of the fact that I feel hatred for myself and others. There, I said it. What is it that you want to say? Just say what you feel. Well, three weeks ago, I found out that my entire life is a lie. So I went on a trip. I thought if I went that I would get all these answers. And somehow when I got back, I would feel different. But I don't. My parents aren't really my parents. And my real parents tried to abort me. And I have a brother. Well, I had a brother. He died shortly after the hill. I'm angry at my parents for not telling me sooner and making me think that I was just like everybody else. I'm angry at my real mom for not wanting me. Why didn't she want me? What's so wrong with me? I found her. and she still doesn't want me. And I feel guilty. Part of me feels like... he should be alive. And I shouldn't. I wonder if he would have been a better person than me. What he would have been like. I just, I, I just hate myself for feeling this way. I see. This uh, cathedral was built in 1893. Named for St. Paul the Apostle. It's <laughs> magnificent. He wrote a letter to the church at Colossae and said, because we have been forgiven by God, we should forgive each other. In 
Christ, you are forgiven. And because you are forgiven, you have the power to forgive. To choose to forgive. Let it go. Hatred is a burden you no longer need to carry. Only in forgiveness can you be free, Anna. A forgiveness that is well beyond your grasp or mine. <laughs> a forgiveness that you you can't find on a trip or even in this cathedral. But if the sun shall set you free, you will be free indeed. So forgiveness frees us. And forgiveness is so powerful, it can kill us of so many things. So um, I had lots of self-hatred and unforgiveness. And for 22 years, I carried it and guilt and self-hatred and, um, you know, just destroying my life because I thought I was such a piece of garbage that it didn't matter what I did. I was already garbage. And so, and the more that I did, the worse that I hated myself. And it was this like never ending process. And then one night in um, desperation, I got on my knees because people had been telling me to pray. I got on my knees and what the experience I had was finding out that um, I did not even have to be forgiven because God didn't judge me. And that forgiveness was already there. And that I only had to choose to forgive and let it go. And this all happened, I don't know how many minutes, but when it was all over, all of that was gone. It was like the inside of me had been changed. And all of that guilt and that remorse and that self-hatred and everything was gone. And I knew then that forgiveness really is the key that sets us free. We live in our own self-imposed prison because we refuse to let go of what we think people have done to us or what we feel we have done to people. If you do nothing else in your life, we talk about gratitude, but if you do nothing else, you can't even get to gratitude unless you forgive. Forgiveness is the key to freedom. And we blame people for everything. Right now, with everything that's going on, we love to blame people. We love to blame politicians and countries and other people and all this kind of stuff. We love to blame God. You know, why is this happening? Why did God let this happen and all of this? The fact of the matter is that until we can forgive everybody and everything, including ourselves, that woman in that movie, it wasn't just forgiving her parents, she had to forgive herself. Because the reality was she was blaming herself for just being who she was. So I'd like to invite you to close your eyes for a moment and take a few deep breaths. And to ask yourself, is there anyone I have not forgiven? or anything, so anything I'm holding on to, because I feel that to forgive means that they're getting away with something. Or maybe I have to look and see if I have any anger against God, or my parents. We cannot truly be happy, joyous, and free if we do not learn how to forgive. So I invite you, if you can forgive, to pray for the willingness to forgive. 
And if you can't pray for the willingness to forgive, pray for the willingness to be willing to forgive. You hold the key to your freedom, your happiness, the rest of your life. So let it go. Give it to God. And you will be free. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Bill. Thank you so much. Here at Unity, we have five basic principles that we believe, and we always like to affirm them. So you can affirm them with us. The first one is that God is all good and active in everything, everywhere. And the second one is I am naturally good because God's divinity is in me and in everyone. And the third is I create my experiences by what I choose to think and what I feel and believe. And four is through affirmative prayer and meditation, I connect with God and bring out the good in my life. And five, I do and give my best by living the truth that I know I make a difference, and we do make a difference, and one way we make a difference is through our gifts to this spiritual community, and just like in the book, every little bit helps, you know, even a small amount makes a difference, and so we appreciate all the gifts that you give us. If you are here and you want to give a gift in person, we have an offering basket out there, and if you're out there and you're ready to give your gift electronically or anyway, let us affirm together our blessing. I invite you to take your love offering in your hand. If you're paying by phone, put your phone in your hand. As we affirm together our blessing together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am grateful, and we are grateful and blessed. So remember, you can give online to our website. You can give by text. You can mail in your donations. You can go get our app, and you can do it that way, whatever way. We really appreciate it. And now we love to close our service with our prayer for protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. 
The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And we are blessed and have a wonderful week, and thank you for joining us.